Hello and welcome to the Engineer's House channel. Today we're going to talk about hydrostatics. This subject has various applications in our lives. Common examples are dams. Dams are widely used in order to provide water for many activities. So it is important to analyze and calculate the hydrostatic forces applied to the walls of these dams. But the question is that how do we compute them? In this video, we are going to obtain a formula for the magnitude of the hydrostatic force and a relation for the location of the center of pressure. But first, let's consider a submerged object. This is a submerged plate with a negligible thickness, so it can be almost treated as a two-dimensional one. This is a side view, so the true object is something like this. Do apologize for my drawing. As I mentioned, it has a negligible thickness. So, we know that every submerged object is under pressure. And from high school, we remember that pressure, which is known as P, is equal to F over A. So obviously, F is equal to P times A. But there is an interesting point about this. The resultant hydrostatic force acting on this plate is a little bit different from what we knew before. First, remember that the pressure is always perpendicular to the surface. These are the pressure lines which acts on both sides of these plates. But for now, we are just analyzing the top surface. The resultant hydrostatic force acting on this plate is equal to the force acting on the centroid. By centroid, I mean the center of area, because we consider this object to be a two-dimensional one. So the centroid is obviously the center of area. For this rectangular plate, the center or the centroid is in the middle, which is some point here. This point is under the pressure of atmosphere and the pressure of the liquid above it. So the total pressure acting on this point, which is also known as the average pressure, is equal to P of atmosphere plus rho G H C. And H C is the vertical distance from the free surface to the centroid. We can rewrite H C using an angle of theta with the free surface. If we call the distance here yc, then hc is equal to yc times the sine of theta. Then finally, we can say that the resultant hydrostatic force is equal to something like this. The total pressure, which is also known as the average pressure, times the area because of this relation. Then. We know that FR, or the hydrostatic force, is equal to PC, or P average, times A. But you might ask yourself, where is this force applied to? Is it applied to the centroid? Obviously not. Because the bottom of this plate is supporting larger amounts of pressure. So the center of pressure, or the line of action of this force, might be somewhere near the bottom. But let's find out where it is. The question is that where is the line of action of FR? From statics, we remember that two parallel forces will be equivalent if they have the same magnitude and the same moment about any point. FR will be equal to this force distribution if they have the same magnitude which we just checked and the same moment about any point like O. We are sure about the magnitude of the forces, but let's write the moment equation about point O. If we write the moment equation, we know that FR times the moment arm is equal to the integration of this force distribution times the moment arm of it, which I will call Y. If we simplify this relation, we will see that this integration is equal to the second moment of area, and this one is equal to the first moment of area. If we simplify this equation again, we will come to this one, but this is not the end. If we use the parallel axis 
theorem, which is known as this. About O. We can rewrite the second moment of area about point C, which is the center of our object, instead of point O. If we do it and simplify our equation again, we will finally have a relation like this, which is actually showing us and telling us the location of the center of pressure. Where is the center of pressure? It is. The point where F R is applied to. On this figure, it is obviously a distance here, and this point will be the center of pressure. But in many calculations, you can easily ignore the atmospheric pressure because it acts on both sides. Then they will cancel each other out, so you don't need to consider it in many applications, and that will make it much easier. But let's check some special cases together. The first case is where we have ignored the atmospheric pressure, so the hydrostatic force distribution starts from zero at the free surface, and it gets larger as it goes deeper. The second case is where we have not ignored the atmospheric pressure, so it does not start from zero, and it has a magnitude at the free surface. But it gets larger as it gets deeper. The other case is where we have a horizontal plate. In the two previous cases, we had a vertical one. In a vertical plate, the pressure distribution changes because you know the depth and the height is not fixed. But in this one, we have a fixed depth when the height is fixed, so the pressure is not changing because rho g h changes with h when h is not changing. Obviously. The pressure distribution and the hydrostatic force distribution is going to be somehow fixed. So this is the case for when we have a horizontal plate. This was the first part of our video. For more information about curved surfaces, and for learning it better and deeper, check the second part of it. We will solve an example, and it will make you understand it much better than just the formulations and something like this. But if you have any question about this explanation, please let me know and please comment your idea or anything. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will see you at the next video.